Hello guys, welcome back to being Mrs. Frazier. Thank you so much for clicking on today's video. Make sure if you haven't yet already to hit that red subscribe button and join my Frazier family. I am just picking up after our last video. This kind of cuts off towards the end there. If you haven't yet already, definitely go check out. I introduced our new family members. That's right. We got some new pets and we absolutely love them. They are just going, they're just growing so big so fast. It's kind of crazy, but I just wanted to go ahead and let you guys know to check out that video if you haven't done so already. I'm going to go ahead and get this living room just kind of picked up from resetting their cage. And then we're going to go ahead and move on to some other projects that definitely need to get done. So who else is with me on this? I was bringing out some of the guinea pigs laundry to wash and I noticed that we still had stuff in the washer and dryer. <laughs> I try so hard not to do this. We live in Florida and not so much in the winter months, but more in the summer months. If you leave the clothes in there for more than a day, they, I mean, even just a few hours because our laundry is out in the garage. We don't have a separate laundry room. It gets hot. It gets humid, very humid here in Florida. And so for whatever reason, the stuff in the washer just gets that mildew, mildew moldy kind of smell really fast. And so I, I try so hard not to leave stuff in the washer and dryer, but your girl forgot. And I came out to find my husband's clothes still in the dryer. So I just need to get these folded up real quick and get things kind of swapped over so I can get caught up on laundry. What does your laundry day schedule look like? We are a family of six, so we are always washing clothes, I swear. I, I think we wash somewhere upwards of like 25 loads a week between all six of us. Um, it, it's absolutely insane. I try to get my husband and my clothes washed on like Mondays, our bedding done on like Tuesdays. Um, our son's bedding is kind of hit or miss. It, floats in there somewhere during the week and along with his clothes, which is usually about two loads. Um, and then our daughters try to do their laundry on Wednesdays and Saturdays, and then they wash all their bedding on Sundays. It, it's just, it's a constant battle in our home of that washer running. Uh, but oh my gosh, you guys, I have to tell you, seeing our comforter sitting here. So my last cleaning video we i cleaned the bedroom right yeah that was on well the video i think went up on maybe like a sunday i don't remember what day it was either a sunday or wednesday because that's when i post my cleaning videos and stuff like that and literally i i filmed it though on thursday and literally saturday my husband was home he was moving some rocks around in the backyard and he took the leaf blower and was trying to blow all the dirt and stuff off of them well, it's been beautiful here in Florida, so the windows have been open, and <laughs> I know you guys know where I'm going with this. He blew dirt all in the window of our bedroom. I There wasn't a surface that I could touch that didn't leave dirt all over my hand, and mind you, this was late at night. I was like, I saw him in here vacuuming. I'm like, what are you doing? Like, why are you vacuuming? And he's like, well, I accidentally did this. And that's when I started touching like everything. <sighs> you guys. So we were at like seven o'clock at night. We had to run to the store. I picked up some pine salt because I wanted, you know, the dirt, like legit dirt. I, wa I just wanted something I knew was going to be good and strong. <laughs> and so we ran to the store, got some pine salt. We had to wash all the bedding um, and the blankets and everything. And just clean everything so we were in here it was like 9 30 at night and we were sitting here like scrubbing the walls washing curtains scrubbing down the blinds you guys it would have been the greatest um cleaning motivation video had i filmed it but it was so late at night i was so tired from all the day's work anyway 
Oh, I couldn't believe it. But anyway, I do want to mention we I I was cleaning out the pantry. I knew that I needed to clean it out. It was getting kind of dusty and just dirty, you know, as normal things do. And I thought to myself, I'm like, okay, these shelves are kind of textured. And I decided that I wanted to go ahead and line them uh, just to make it easier to clean, you know, whatever. And so I decided I was going to look, well, I looked on Amazon and I looked at Walmart and that and shelf liner at both of those places are so expensive. So I decided to just run over to the Dollar Tree real quick and pick up a couple of rolls. It actually took me three rolls. Um, I could have probably used less, but I wanted to use all one piece. Um, and I think their rolls are like 53 inches or something like that. And I only needed like 43 inches. But um, yeah, so... I was like, okay, we're just going to run to the Dollar Tree, pick up this liner before. I've used this shelf liner before in another project. If you are an OG OG, like you've been around for a very long time, since almost the beginning, you have seen this shelf liner before when I redid a desk. I, it, you guys, it may only be a dollar for a roll of it, but it, so it's cheap, but it is really, really good quality, a shelf liner. So if you are ever in a rut of looking for some shelf liner, definitely check out your Dollar Trees. They are very limited on um, color options, style options. But, I mean, they have a couple different wood ones if you want to go that route. I think there's like a marble, like a faux marble looking one. I just thought this one was really pretty with the florals on there. And then it's neutral, so it fits, you know, the inside of my house, how everything is neutral in here. So... Yeah, I just wanted to go ahead and get that on there. I was cleaning this out and I thought it was a great time to go ahead and just apply the shelf liner. It is so easy. There's like little um, uh, ruler lines on the back of it. So you just kind of cut down and cut where you need to go. It, it, it's super simple. Always let you back in when I begin to get myself together again. To build my walls up, but you're taking them down. It's tearing me apart. I can't pretend. Now I have to get over you again. You said it was the last time that you keep coming back to show me. Sorry, you have changed now, but it's the same old story. If you haven't done so yet, definitely go check out our last video. I went over to Kirkland's. Y'all have been asking, so I went over there. I absolutely love Kirkland's. It is... It, I love Kirkland's. It's just so expensive, you guys. You definitely have to find um, a coupon or a sale or whatever to find the pricing, the good pricing on it. But they definitely have some great quality stuff. So if you haven't yet already, definitely go check out that video. I, I do want to go over to At Home. We have a project coming up that I want to get some stuff for. And I think At Home is going, the At Home store um, is going to have the stuff that I am looking for so I'm gonna be heading over there if you guys don't know though uh, the one is not local to us it's about 40 minutes away well it's more like 45 minutes away on a good day for those of you who have ever been to Florida Central Florida you guys have heard of I4 I, I know you have um, you Disney goers or Universal goers or even just those of you that live here I know you guys have heard of I4 and uh, I4's time frame can change in a matter of seconds literally my husband dri drives I4 daily and <laughs> he can literally go from an hour commute to a three hour commute very quickly thankfully it's not an everyday occurrence um, so he does pretty good with that but 
the the at home store that I that is closest to me is in Lake Mary, um, which is close to Orlando, which means I have to drive on I four. And like I said, it's about forty five minutes away on a good day. Um, I did look at the map the other day, and it said it was like sixty five minutes. I'm like, oh my goodness, <laughs> there must be an accident somewhere, and that's gonna build up quickly. So I didn't end up going that day, but I definitely want to. Um, just a quick side note here real quick uh tip from tammy if you have large boxes you know we do a lot of sam's club and bj's member or like the wholesale club membership stores uh shopping and so a lot of our stuff comes in big bulk boxes if you guys don't want to have you know you have like one thing left like for instance these red lobster biscuits i literally had two packages left in this big old box and i no longer wanted to store it so i just wrote the instructions on the package of the biscuit misc mix so that way I could just pull it out when I am ready to go but anyway back to the I4 situation um, I can go down 95 which would be a lot easier and go to the um, at-home store in like it's off of like colonial but I really uh, I don't know that store is a lot smaller than the one in Lake Mary so I haven't fully decided what I'm gonna do I do like I said I want to get over there I want to film for you guys for one for two I just really love shopping uh, with you guys and seeing what all is new in all these different stores it's so fun and fresh i know i don't always have a haul for you guys because i'm really on a journey to um you know just kind of not necessarily decluttering but decluttering at the same time we already did a lot of decluttering when we moved here and so i, I don't know i just i don't want to build up a whole bunch of decor but i do just i like to look i like to see what's new and what's fresh and what's out there so definitely make sure you're subscribed and come back because we will be going to that at home store don't worry though for those of you that are here for the cleaning motivation or the, like the little home projects there will be more of those coming as well um next month we are going to be doing our son's bedroom uh in a okay i'm gonna drop a hint or i'm gonna tell you what the theme is but you guys are gonna have to come back because the ideas are literally exploding in my head um about what what we're going to be doing and it's going to be a space theme so i cannot wait to share that with you guys that makeover with you uh we have some backyard projects going on um just a lot of different things plus just your you know your regular every week cleaning motivation uh with you know within the entire house i do have a video coming up um it's a 30 day deep clean um clean with me video to kind of give you guys ideas of how to get your home deep cleaned if you don't have like a whole day to sit there and deep clean you know if you get overwhelmed with the deep cleaning process doing it all in one day this 30 day deep clean will definitely give you guys um ideas on how on what to do you know day by day and so that way if you need you only have you know maybe you only have 10 minutes one day to do a deep clean or maybe you have an hour one day to do a deep clean this video will definitely give you um some ideas and tips on how to go about that so definitely stay tuned for that video uh that one will be coming up shortly uh side note here real fast i okay so i cleaned out the pantry um i do not know this pantry used to have bifold doors and so there was like a metal piece a metal bracket and i don't know they glued that that darn thing on and i cannot get the glue off the tile so if you're wondering what that is it's not built up of dirt or mud or anything like that i just for the life of me could not get it off the floor but anyway again um i know i'm just rambling on but how did this this turned out so good i absolutely love that i decided to go ahead and add the shelf liner i just think it looks so much nicer what do you guys think oh I have a love-hate relationship with these doors like the ones that have the designs in them like this I, I think they look so much nicer than those old 80s just like flat doors but the dust that builds up in these is like in these little 
boxes, I guess. I don't know what to call them. I can't I can't think of the correct word. Y'all know what I'm talking about. It's the dust that I just showed you. It, it builds up so quickly, especially being right here, because that door behind me or next to me, behind me is our bedroom, but the, the door that's next to me leads out to the garage, and the dust, the, oh my gosh, the dust and the dirt that comes from flying in through there and getting on this door is just ridiculous and it just builds up so quickly on these types of doors i you know that was one thing when we, when i was telling you about my bedroom earlier about my husband blowing all the dirt in here um i asked him i said did you clean the door off because he was helping me clean he made the mess and so he was like i made the mess i'll do it all don't worry but you know how us women are you know it's it's not clean unless we clean it so i was definitely in here helping him um and i was like so did you clean the door off and he was like well no and i'm like look at the back of that door I promise you there's dirt on it. Look at the front of it. I promise you there's dirt on it. And there was. <laughs> and he was like, how does it even get there? I'm like, I don't know. It, it just collects everywhere. So, um, yeah. These doors, like I said, I have a love-hate relationship with them. But this back door here, though, from little kids, you know, because we have littles. Um, especially my son. He will go out there and outside and just get so dirty. And when he comes in... You know, his little handprints get all over the door. So I just wanted to make sure that I got all that cleaned up and cleaned off of there as well. Uh, but now we're going to go ahead, head back into the living room, get this living room just kind of reset. Um, just, you know, tidying up basically. <laughs> So I need help. <laughs> this chair, the brown recliner here, I love it. It is a lazy boy. It was my mom's. Um, so it is well over 10 years old. It's probably more like 12 years old because I think she bought it a couple years before she passed. But it, it, I love the chair. But it was in our son's room and he was not so great. You know, little kids, they just don't treat furniture as well as us adults do. And so it was getting damaged. And so I moved it out here to the living room, but it just takes up so much room. Our living room is so tiny. I, I'm like on the struggle bus. I don't want to get rid of the chair. I would honestly rather get rid of the couch than get rid of the chair. But right now it's just not in the budget and to get a new couch because well i want a leather couch <laughs> and so i i'm just trying to decide what to do with the chair right now i have left it where it's at in the living room the cats love having it out there the kids actually love having it out there they sit in it all the time now with us where before they really never came out except for you know one time we'd watch like family movies and stuff like that but they they have just been spending a lot more time out in the living room with us now that we have the chair out there so i'm like i'm so torn on it it's blocking my beautiful cowhide that i absolutely love but it is also just in the way i don't know i don't know what to do you guys help me decide what to do with it or if i should just put it back in freddie's room i i don't know I know someday we'll get rid of the couch, and so I guess I'm just holding on to that. But anyway, I am moving on. I, I somehow wax got on the outside of my candle, and it dripped all over this stand. And so I wanted to go ahead and... I don't know if you guys have ever seen this trick before where you use a paper towel and then iron it to heat up the wax and then it just wipes right off. It was the easiest way to get this wax cleaned up because nothing else was getting it. Um... So if you have wax somewhere and you need to uh, get it up, use your iron and a paper towel and it'll come right up as you can see there. So I, I, I only did this on that piece of furniture purely because 
that furniture looks distressed anyway so if it did something wrong it wouldn't really necessarily ruin it so be careful what you're using it on i don't know that i would necessarily use it on like my nice wood furniture like if i spilled wax in the bedroom or something i i honestly don't know how i would get that up uh but on this like cheaper wood piece that's already distressed it was a super easy way to get the wax up I am still absolutely loving this coffee table. I am so proud of this coffee table, you guys. If you don't know, we, my husband and I built this coffee table. Um, I shared it here on YouTube, so if you guys are interested, it's definitely in my videos. Definitely go check it out if you're looking to have a coffee table like that as well. It was such a simple build. Um, and I, I absolutely love it. It is beautiful. It is sturdy. I am just so proud of it. I absolutely, I don't know. I just had to tell you guys how much I love it. But now it is time for dinner or supper or whatever you call it. I remember growing up, my grandma called it supper because dinner was your noon meal and supper is your evening meal. So not lunch, not lunch for your noon meal. Dinner is the noon meal. How many of y'all grew up with grandmas like that? I, I mean, I'm from Nebraska, you know, uh, born and raised. My family is all from Iowa. They're all basically farm kids raised on Iowa farms. And so, uh, yeah, S supper is definitely what I grew up calling it. Um, as I got older, I started calling supper dinner <laughs> purely because, you know, that's what everybody else called it. I, I got rid of the supper, you know, but... I will tell you the pop situation. The pop situation is stuck with me and I don't think pop will ever go anywhere. But it's so funny just the things that you grow up around and the words you call things. Um, there was something else. I forget what it was. We were talking about it yesterday, my kids and I. And I mean, I know like suckers. It's so crazy, right? It's just, it's, which, uh, lollipops, if you don't know. <laughs> um, and it's just funny, the different things that we call things. Or, oh, crayons. Y'all, we went to the Crayola experience. Well, we just went to the gift shop area. I love crayons. Like, all color related things. And we were talking about how we pronounce the word crayon. My kids and I all say crayon, like, you know, like cranberry, like C-R-A-N. But my husband pronounces it like the correct way, the crayon, crayon. I, I can't even say it. Y'all have to let me know how you guys pronounce the word crayon. And what do you guys call those little wax sticks? But anyway, off on a tangent here, but um, I'm just making some pineapple chicken. It was absolutely delicious. I loved this so much. It was so good and so easy to make. I literally, I tripled the recipe, um, but you could totally do a single recipe of it um it's like i said it's super easy it's just some boneless chicken breast cut up you cook that all first um and then you just season it with salt and pepper to your liking uh cut up some bell peppers i used red and orange but the recipe technically only called for red i personally love orange bell peppers though they're my favorite um but you only need one and then a can of uh, pineapple chunks because you're going to need the juice out of the can and the pineapple um, some soy sauce some chicken broth some hoisin sauce I think I'm pronouncing that correctly however I will tell you that I didn't have any hoisin sauce so I just used regular barbecue sauce I know I think the difference is just like hoisin sauce is a little bit it's got a little bit more of a kick to it so I did end up adding in some um uh, what the heck is that? Crushed red pepper. I did add red, crushed red pepper. The recipe did not call for it, but I added it. It was so good. It added just a little bit of heat. If I made this again, which I will because it was delicious and my kids actually really liked it. Um, but I will, I would probably add a little bit more of that crushed red pepper just to turn the heat up a smidge more. I like a spice to my Asian kind of style cooking. 
or foods but if you guys are interested i'll leave this recipe down in the uh description for you guys so definitely try it out it was so good um and so super easy to make don't push push me any further to the edge to the edge just come come into the wildlands of my mind So like I said, you just kind of cut up the chicken in about one inch chunks or so, bite sized pieces, you know. Um, you cook the chicken first, let that get all cooked till it's almost done. And then um, you don't want to cook it till it's all the way done because this does cook for quite a bit longer. And so you don't want to overcook your white meat. White meat, once you, you over, it's easy to overcook and then it gets really dry. And so, um, also, I just switched pans because I was like, okay, this pan is not big enough for all this stuff. So I just pulled out my bigger pan that's more like a wok. Um, I love these big pans, by the way. I got them at Home Goods when we first moved down here to Florida, like almost two years ago. I absolutely love them. They are perfect size pans for my big family. Uh, but anyway, you just kind of cook the chicken, cook the bell peppers down a smidge, and then just add in your liquid ingredients. Um, and then you just want to let it cook until that the liquid thickens up. It takes a little bit of time. Um, I think maybe like five to ten minutes or so for that liquid to thicken up. But this was so delicious. I served it on a bed of white rice. You could use white rice, jasmine rice, whatever rice you prefer. But it was so good and I cannot wait to make it again. You guys are going to have to let me know if you try it. But anyway, guys, that's going to be it for today's video. Don't forget to give this video. Give, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. Hit that red subscribe button. I hope you all stay happy, healthy, and safe. And we will see you in the next one. Bye, guys.